Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Um, this is Nikolai Bolas here. Um, I just wanted to share this game from Modern Q with all of you guys because I thought it was really cool and I thought you guys might enjoy it. Um, the premise, I'm playing Blue Black Control and this is game two. In game one, I lost and I saw that my opponent had five color planeswalkers was his deck. So he had like a ton of planeswalkers. So uh, yeah, this is the game. Uh, and I will be commentating. Uh, this hand is pretty great for me. Never to Return in particular is really good against Planeswalkers, and Lay Claim is obviously fantastic. Imprisoned in the Moon is a card that I sided in for the matchup, because I figured it'd be good. Okie doke. I decide not to kill his Jace, because I figure he has more important creatures that I couldn't kill later, and I can also kill his Jace with some of my various kill spells for uh, artifacts. I mean, not artifacts, Planeswalkers. And I would rather constrict his... Uh, I wouldn't want to constrict my mana here. I'd rather just play my Jace. Oracle of Moldiah. Uh, it reveals a Heart of Kirin that I then know about for the a couple more turns into the future, even though I decide to slaughter Pact on his Oracle because I don't want him to get a ton of value when he only has three cards in hand. Okay, so now I know about two of the cards in his hand because of Duress. So he loots away the Reflector Mage. Loots again to flip Jace. Loots away a Kitchen Finx. And then he casts the Chandra that I saw. I got rid of Commit to Memory because I didn't want him to have a counter spell for my Lay Claim or anything. And I have to pay for the Slaughter Pack now. And then I decide to just kill his Chandra because it's going to be a real problem. He's just plussing his Jace up toward the ultimate. And now this Soren is a real good opportunity to use my Lay Claim, so I just take his Soren, immediately kill his Jace, so he can't like get value. Because he plussed to reveal a Quarantine Field, that would have been able to get rid of my Lay Claim, so that's why I did that. This Quarantine Field in his hand becomes really important, because he can Quarantine Field the Imprisoned in the Moon at some point. So I'm just kind of worried about that for a bit in the game. Like, at this point, I need to find a way to pressure him while playing around Quarantine Field on the Chandra. That's why I play this, because I want, if he, like, get the Chandra back. Actually, on this turn, I was hoping that, mm -hmm. since he only had the Quarantine Field in hand, I played the Curator and held up Nimble Obstructionist, so that he would potentially try to get Imprisoned in the Moon mm -hmm. and get my Curator, and then I could cycle my Nimble Obstructionist and just blow him out. But because he top-decked in a Johnny, he played that instead. So I feel if he had not top decked that, I just would have won on the spot. But as it was, it got to be a great game. So he got he found a Raul Zarek. And this is a little, little another neat line. I developed my Creeping Tar Pit last turn, I believe. And now I can't just attack his Ajani here but with my Creeping Tar Pit and this guy because he can crew a part of Kieran and block this, and it only takes three. So uh, I end up having to use my Nimble Obstructionist to stop his Heart of Kieran trigger so that his Ajani goes down to four loyalty. And, uh, yeah, I can then get him that way. And I kept the land on top because I figured it would let me double spell in a turn because my skin render may be able to maybe be able to kill one of his creatures. And now he's going to play his quarantine field, I think. I'm pretty sure he does that. No, he played the Nissa this turn. Yeah, that's right. He plays quarantine field in a couple turns. So he, he played Nissa because he top decked it. And uh, flip the Blasphemous Act. Oh yeah, he does play Quarantine Field this turn. Yep, he gets back his Chandra. And I think he exiles... Yeah, I might get the Daetherborn. And he uses his Chandra. So he no longer has that. His Chandra is still tapped amongst the lands, which is kind of odd looking. So I take a Jace with my Shellbuck Isle. And I bounce his Chandra to his hand. Because I figure I can then use my Creeping Tar Pit to kill this Nissa and then slowly get and then get rid of his Chandra in a couple turns too. So a Creeping Tar Pit so far has killed one Planeswalker. No, two Planeswalkers. No, it's about to kill a second Planeswalker. But it, it's just the hero of this match. It's such a good card in this matchup. He can't block it. He can't really interact with it because all of his stuff is on Planeswalkers. the classic game of modern cube killing planeswalkers left right and center so i fire up the creeping tar pit kill his nissa he's still got his chandra but uh 
he uses a removal spell on my Tassiger. And the fact that it's an aura comes up later. So he pluses to kill my Jace. I play Chasm Skulker, which was probably a mistake because he can just Chandra to kill it. And even the Chandra plus doesn't take it out of range, but uh, I played it. I don't get any value. And at this point, uh, he attempts to cast Garrick. And I tank for a while here because I'm trying to decide whether or not I should balance my Tassiger with my Cryptic Command instead of drawing a card. And I eventually decide that Tassiger is better than a random card off the top of my deck, so I do bounce it. And then I recast Tassiger, exiling a bunch of cards from my graveyard that I hope will be relevant. Use my Creeping Tarpit to finish off his uh, Planeswalker. So now my Creeping Tarpit Planeswalker kill count is 3. Killed a Johnny, it killed a Nissa, now it's killed a Chandra. Which is just insane. This little, the little land that could. Rouse Eric. He plays that card that I knew about. And it he uses that in combination with a Lightning Helix to take down my Tassiger. Which is just like really absurd because he could have used the Lightning Helix on my Creeping Tar Pit at some point, And this is, ends up just like completely hosing him. Because <laughs> I don't think he has any other answers to the Creeping Tar Pit in his deck. So I managed to Tassiger into a, a kind of bad card there. But I mean, you can't always control it. And then I decide not to do it again because I don't want to mill myself because I only have 10 cards. And I'm not really getting anything incredible, re incredibly relevant. So I use Tarpit to finish off his Rouse Eric. And then I, uh, I used my Never to Return to get rid of his Commit to Memory. So the Commit to Memory is in the Exiled Zone now. Uh, and that's just so he can't reset the game and get all his Planeswalkers back. I wanted to do that for a while, and he didn't have double blue really at any point so to flashback memory. So I just wanted to do that so that he couldn't get all his Planeswalkers back and beat me. And now I'm just play. I'm just, now I'm just trying to kill him kind of as fast as I can because time was an issue in this game. This match in general, because this game took so long. And I'm just going to reopen this. He played the Swamp. So I looted away uh, land, and now he just plays his Blast from this act for like a billion. He has two cards in hand. And now Creeping Tarpit goes to work. He's at 18, so Creeping Tarpit has six turns of attacking to do, and I only have six cards left in my deck. So this was really kind of sketchy. Because if he had any answer, I was super dead. And right now, the Creeping Tarpet kill count is at 4, because it killed the Rawls Eric, too. So he used a Maelstrom Pulse on my uh, Shadow Mage Infiltrator. Now I have 4 cards left that I need to do 4 hits to him, so it's really, really close. If he can manage to stop it one turn, I'm dead. It killed Rawls Eric. It killed... I'm just going to open up the graveyard so you guys can see. It killed Rawls Eric. Creeping Tarpet kill count 1. Kill count 2. Kill count three, kill count four. The little creeping tar pit that could. What a great card. It was so cool. During the draft, I like wheeled that for my deck and it was super good. <sighs> and then I really can, I don't want to develop my Dragon Lord Silum Guard until I have to because he has so many Planeswalkers. Another Planeswalker. And now I just decide to use my Silum Guard on his guy. He anguished on makings in response, so I don't get anything. I could have attacked him directly with the tar pit, but I didn't want him to have another answer and then me get hosed, so I just went for the safe play. And I killed his card. So I now I have two draw steps, and I was so speedy because I was trying to click through because I only had two minutes that I skipped an attack. So I ended up getting him with tar pit, and then uh, final turn of the match, I uh, got him for exactly lethal. When I had zero cards in deck, my tar pit did... 15 to him at the end there, and uh, yeah, my opponent just said something like GG at the end there. And uh, yeah, that was the a fun match. I, I mean, a fun game. It wasn't the full match, but I thought you guys might enjoy that, and uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoy the clip, feel free to leave a subscribe, click the subscribe button uh, on the video. Uh, 
If you want to catch me live, I stream most days at Nikolai Bolas. There will be a link to my Twitch channel in the description. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.